Yo, 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 open tournaments can be great. You know, they let contenders show themselves and their worth to the world. Competitors that would otherwise go unnoticed for too long. For known players who had something to prove to the community, being able to show good results in the World Cup was a godsend. Hey, so you guys want some placements of your own in upcoming tournaments? We got you. Head over to ProGuys.com for courses that fill you in on all the pro secret strategies. Or just connect with a pro through our coaching service, InstaPro. You guys are going to learn skills from the pros themselves in the game of your choice. You'll be getting some victories in no time. Trust me. What's going on, everybody? This is Keith Allen, and today we're going to be doing an analysis on some of Kangarna's unknown World Cup's gameplay. So, Unknown's a controller player that qualified twice for the Solo World Cup Finals. Being one of the only few controller players to make it to New York, he's definitely a player whose play style is worth looking at. So, we're sure a lot of comments are going to be on aim assist trigger spamming, which is expected. I mean, he's on a controller. But surely, there's more to it. Plenty of players use him, but only 8 out of 200 World Cup spots won were controller players. Yeah, his aim is great, but his style of play in conjunction with good decision making is what makes him a true pro. So guys, the match we'll be looking at was a dual World Cup game, where Unknown gets 20 elims himself. You know, one thing we see Unknown do a lot right from the start when scouting players is hold his camera still. This is an old trick that has been used in games since before Fortnite, yet it is one that we don't see much used anymore. So by holding your view still on a fixed area, it makes it much easier to see any potential movement. So as he approaches Snobby, which he knows players landed at, he holds his camera still so he can spot enemies' positions. He doesn't spot anyone in this case, but it does turn out there's some players in Snobby after all. So guys, here's the main trait of Unknown's playstyle, aggressive third party. This guy just loves to take advantage of showing up during or after a fight. I mean, it is the easiest way of getting kills. Plus, you know, you usually get the loot of multiple players to kit yourself for the end game. Here's our first third party of the match. My god, just look at that aim. Unknown's duel gets a knock with his rifle here. Then, the player that was hit earlier falls to his death, leaving one enemy remaining in Snobby. Let's take a look at how Unknown deals with the last player. Unknown's duel is lobbing grenades from one side, but in any 2v1 scenario, you never want to attack from the same angle. Unknown sees this and instead chooses to drop in behind his enemy to pressure the opposite side. So guys, you'll see that he doesn't just go for any preemptive builds to gain control over the builds. He's looking for shots, first and foremost. Building isn't a particular strength of playing on a controller, whereas shooting most definitely is. Sometimes, he'll go for a wall replace to apply pressure when needed, but most of the time, you'll see Unknown holding his weapon ready to shoot as soon as he can. So, they want to start off this mid-game with a bang and immediately go for any third-party opportunities presented to them. They're looking to join in on fights with pure force. The idea is to take advantage of weak and preoccupied opponents with aggression to the point where they just can't react properly. So guys, listen to how confident Unknown is. Now this is where the fun W key starts, dude. Okay, so this guy knows that this is the point of the match where he can capitalize on other mistakes the most. Being in the World Cup qualifiers, there are a bunch of super aggressive players in the lobby trying to rack up kill points. Unfortunately for them, Unknown's going to be sending them back to the lobby to reconsider how they should play their next game. Okay, so check this out. Look at how he approaches this one player he tagged earlier, now sitting in a box. First, he puts a cone down in order to prevent his opponent editing out and placing a ramp over top of him. Then he spams the wall down, but it doesn't just break just yet. He sees his opponent turbo building, so he knows he won't be able to break it with another shot. Okay, so at this point, he keeps his weapon out, waiting to retaliate to any edit play attempts. Once he sees his opponent pull out a weapon, he knows that his chance is to go in. So he fires another shot to break in the box and goes to town on the guy inside. Okay, okay, so surely you noticed that this wasn't the safest play to make. There was actually a decent amount of risk involved. Unknown gets away with 100 HP after the kill, which means the guy needed to land only one more combat shot to knock out Unknown here. Ultimately, when you're going in for a high kill game, this type of aggression is needed in order to kill players quickly and move to the next fight. Unknown is aware that he has another enemy team right next to him and is willing to gamble with the close range fight. Knowing how to avoid shots in these close quarter fights is just as important as knowing how to land them. For example, watch this. Unknown maneuvers around and past the opposing player as much as possible to throw off their aim. You know, it works a bit better when you move around the right side of them and not the left, but in this case, it ends up working just fine. There's also some worry that you'll get trap killed when you make plays like these. But Unknown takes the risk, betting that it won't happen so he can get the kill quickly and move on to the next fight. So, move on to the next fight is exactly what they do. Unknown notices them trying to shadow bomb away out of a door. He pulls a big brain move here and he builds around the door. Look at this, trapping one of the two dual players. 
He was a bit faster with closing the door. He may have gotten the kill with the spike trap. But he ends up being too slow, and his opponent manages to slink back into the old build. As you can see, a known press is on him in the same manner. Weapon out, W King with some close quarter maneuvering to try to avoid damage. He wants this kill quickly, and it ends up working out. The same type of third party aggression continues throughout the mid game. Immediately after the previous engagement, they're looking to get into another fight with already distracted opponents. Just look at how quickly Unknown grabs three kills here, barely getting hit at all. He kills the first two players without any resistance. Then the last player tries to fight back with an edit play, but Unknown doesn't care. He knows that this last guy is probably low in HP while he's full. Because of that, he can keep pushing with confidence. Okay guys, so one final point to bring up on aggressive play. The main reason it works so well is that you're catching players off guard with it. Think about the scenario we just saw. A gnome pushes inside their base after getting his first knock and then the players inside are completely unaware. Before the last player even realizes it, he's got a guy in his box pickaxing towards him, thirsty for the kill. So guys, listen to this. The less time you give your opponent to react, the more likely they are to panic and not know what to do, which can lead them to making mistakes during the fight. So let's transition to the end game now. So being a controller player, one of Unknown's best moments to shine in these competitive matches is during the all-out craziness of the endgame. If Unknown can get and hold high ground, which is exactly what he goes for here, he'll be able to beam players constantly with his assault rifle, netting a limb points left and right. As you should know, high ground is also generally the place any player wants to control during the end game, as it keeps you more protected, provides a greater vantage point, and it definitely allows for easier rotations when needed. So after grabbing his first kill, using his new high ground position, he resets back up top and starts looking for more kill opportunities. Okay guys, so notice all walls flashing, indicating they're being shot at. Unknown is for sure noticing. He's obviously looking for somebody to get spammed so he can join in and get that easy kill. So he notices a player edit their cover away, so he goes in for some shots. When the player resets the edit, the wall is still very spammable at low HP. So Unknown continues to shoot at it, especially after noticing another team joining in from the opposite side. So having a build covered toward two opposing angles is difficult, which makes Unknown's bullets that much more likely to slip through. Hey, that's why you see so many players sometimes spam a single target during these end games. So here's the start of the moving zones, in which, spoiler alert, Unknown frags out. Like we said earlier, high ground is super important here. You'll see that, with Unknown constantly trying to retake and hold height as much as possible. He tries for a while to take high ground here, but the opponents are just too high up and reinforced for any methods to work. There's a lot of attempts to break down or build up to the high ground. If the attempt doesn't work, meaning he gets shot at or the storm starts to close in, Unknown makes sure to change his vertical position to create more space. He usually does this by editing or waterfalling down to a lower level. He even manages to surprise the enemy this way, grabbing himself a life-saving limb. Even at the point where he's missing quite a bit of HP, Unknown is still really going for the high ground. Should he miss this opportunity, there won't be many more once the circle shrinks. So Unknown makes one final high ground push here. I get it. It's understandable why he makes this attempt instead of just popping a rift to go. It was a good try. He manages to knock down the high ground, but unfortunately just gets blocked off during his retake. The push ends up not working out too well. Just when he's out of mats and things are dire, he pops a rift. Here's where that trademark aggression comes out. He goes for the unexpected move. The one where his opponent has little time to react. It works, and he gets a knock before this guy can realize what just happened. At this point, we see our duo hold an attempt to secure their high ground. Unknown drops down to get a bit closer to the action, eventually getting right on top of his opponent's boxes. His kill attempt isn't successful and they lose high ground in the process. They immediately switch their focus to knock that player off the high ground. With two players shooting, they easily destroy it and net themselves another kill. I was the kid who was high before, dude. I killed him. Right here, Unknown goes into close range fighting mode. This time, he has the storm working with him. He doesn't need to pressure the box because he knows his opponents aren't going to move. Again, he doesn't try much for wall replacing or anything fancy. He keeps his shotgun out, making sure he can land a shot the moment they peek. Finally, it's two versus one. Unknown makes his aggressive push and grabs himself a 20 bomb win. Unknown is definitely a player you want to pay attention to during the World Cup Finals. Solos is what he qualified for and that mode can be a lot harder to play aggressive in considering the fact that he's also going up against the best of the best. I mean, how do you feel he'll perform during the World Cup? 
Will the best player pool have him letting go of the forward position on his joystick more often? Or do you think an aggressive play style can work against the pros? Hey guys, let us know what you think in the comments. So once again, this is your boy Keith Allen. Hey, connect with me on my Instagram. I would love to connect with you guys. We got a lot of stuff coming out and thanks for watching.